Hey hey, in this week's video we have this DAF LF in and as usual we have our general idiot lights on on the dip. Nothing like scaring a driver with an emissions failure light. So we're going to need to plug into this to get more of a definitive answer on what the actual DTCs are. With the fuse box cover off we can get Davy plugged in and fired up. With our ECUs identified we can expand on the faults in the ECS DC6 ECU. Unlike the CF and XF which have separate ECUs for the after treatment, the ECS DC6 ECU also processes all these functions, hence these fault codes for the after treatment system in here. Well this is interesting, can time out for every single sensor going in the after treatment system? Have we got a broken wire in the harness? Am I going to start testing can wiring? Not at the moment, as we have a simple check to make first. As I've stated before, for a node to work and communicate on the CAN, the ECU must be live and with all our sensors offline, you'd be a fool for not checking our power at the fuse box. With our after treatment fuse identified on the fuse box cover, I can test the fuse with my test light and as you can see, it's seen better days. Is it a coincidence? Well, we'll have to see. But rather than waste a pack of fuses, I'm going to dig out my short circuit diagnostic kit and fit it in place of the fuse. This cost me a small fortune once upon a time, but I'm now able to supply this a lot cheaper myself, which you'll find on my website over at trucktechuk.com. Anyway, with the ignition off and our resettable fuse in, it was safe to try and track down the wiring fault that has caused our customer's issue. Well, we have a NOx sensor unplugged here for a start. That's a new one. Looks like someone gave up trying to fix it and sent it my way. As you can see, I've disconnected all the components listed in the fault codes, NOx sensors, temp sensors, and now we can turn the ignition on to see if it's a wiring fault that had blown our fuse. With the resettable fuse not blowing, this indicates that the wiring isn't to fault at the moment, but that doesn't mean it won't blow if we start manipulating the harness, so back in the pit. I want a visual indicator of what's going on down here while I'm moving things around or plugging in components, so in goes my NOx sensor diagnostic tool. I finally got these up on the website now if you want one. As you can see, I've got my can and my supply voltage showing, and I can now start plugging stuff back in and checking for a short to ground fault. With the tester losing all power on the NOx after cat sensor, I go back upstairs and check the fuse. Sure enough, it had blown the resettable fuse and we have identified our fault, which turns out to be our NOx after cat sensor. With this now my main focus of attention, we can clip the temp sensors back in and whip this NOx after cat sensor off, if I had the right size length socket. As you can see, this NOx sensor has water flowing out the side of the ECU. No wonder the fuse was blowing. It certainly has lasted well compared to the EBS component junk that everyone keeps fitting and bringing here, wondering why the trucks have a NOx sensor verification issues. With our genuine sensor now fitted and the ECU bolts tightened up, we can replace the fuse with a standard one and finish up with a few cable ties. With everything refitted and connected, I can check that the circuit is still intact before refitting the plate on the exhaust and heading to Davy. With our fault codes now inactive for all the sensors, we can clear all the old error codes and start the truck up, ensuring all the lights stay out.
I have a bulb to fit before road test, but once this was rectified and the road test was completed, the vehicle was delivered back to the customer. If you want more short circuit to ground diagnostics, I've got this video here. And as always, like, subscribe, comment, and I'll catch you in the next one.